on top of the 5A boys soccer mountain. But for how much longer? We are catching up with the defending state title owners, Wasatch boys soccer head coach Jared Hendry. But also, we are talking with one of the best hitters in all of softball in the state of Utah. Indy Jones catches up right here on the scoreboard. Hey, what is going on, everyone? Welcome on in to The Scoreboard. I am your host for today's show, Brigham Harris. Today is March 11th, our Friday episode, which means we are looking back to this week and also looking ahead to the weekend. It's actually a little interesting. We don't usually have high school sports on the weekend, but this weekend is not like any other. We are going to be seeing baseball, softball in the uh, heart of the southern Utah area in St. George. We're going to be seeing baseball, softball tournaments all weekend. We already have a couple of games to report on uh, here for some of our local teams. We are super stoked about that. In today's episode, as you just saw, we are going to be catching up with the head soccer coach for the number one 5A boys soccer programs in the entire state of Utah, that in Wasatch High School, Jared Hendry, an eight-time uh, or eight-year head coach. We're going to be sitting down chatting with him. He's been with the program for nearly a decade, and he has got a lot of soccer wisdom to pass on to these young men, and we're uh, super stoked for this season. Also, like you saw, we're going to be talking with Indy Jones, the number two hitter, number three hitter in the entire state, if you're depending on uh, what classification you're talking about. But uh, when it comes to 3A, when it comes to that region for South Summit High School, Indy Jones is at the very top of that pedestal. We're going to be talking with, uh, again, her, and we're catching up with her coach a little bit as well. So today is a bit of a soccer softball episode, but a whole lot more to be talked about in this week in sports. So let's get right into that. Starting off, as usual, with Park City, the hometown high school here, the Miners. We are going to be seeing them kick off their baseball season against Wasatch, so a little crosstown rivalry. That's going to be at the Dixie Tournament down in St. George. Like I mentioned, lots of baseball and softball going on this weekend. We wish both of those two teams the best of luck. Now as on to boys soccer for Park City. Man, they have had an incredible opening week. Not only did we get to attend their home opener, their season opener against Bear River where they routed the Bears three to nothing. They also played against the RSL Academy. That's right, Real Salt Lake Academy, uh, an incredibly talented team, talented group of players. They hosted the RSL Academy and they defeated them one to nil. So an incredible start for the Miners boys soccer team. They are definitely going to be chasing Wasatch down for that 5A state title here in just a couple of months. So stoked to have both of those teams on our show. We got to catch up with a player over there in Harrison Polychronus. So, so much more boys soccer to come out of Park City. Also, softball is on its way in and boys lacrosse also starts their, uh, their 2022 campaign that get is going to be at Bountiful tonight and then we'll see in just one week time the state championship rematch between them and Corner Canyon. We will definitely be there in Draper and it is going to be an awesome game to watch. Moving on now to Heber City, Wasatch High School, sort of the same thing. Remember the baseball team is going to be facing off against Park City. We want to wish both those teams the best of luck as we are uh, big fans of both, but we know that they are bitter rivals. So it is going to be a, uh, a very intense weekend down there in St. George. As we mentioned, uh, the Wasatch boys soccer team returning state 5A champions. They faced off against the very tough Timp View, but didn't really seem like much of a challenge. A 5-1 to one victory uh, over Timp View to start off the 2022 campaign for the Wasps, and they are just uh, on the up and up. They got a pretty talented, pretty difficult uh, preseason schedule ahead of them, but we wish them the best of luck. Now on to softball. As we mentioned, we are going to be uh, talking a lot of softball this week as a tournament going on right now. Wasatch just defeated a, um, actually Clearfield earlier this morning, Friday morning, as the first game of the tournament is starting to get kicked off and they'll have more games that we will keep you updated on. But as for right now, the Lady Wasps are 2-0 and on the season. They made it to the semifinals last year and so we are super excited to get to talk to their head coach, their players. So much exciting things coming out of Heber as of right now. Let's move on to North Summit up in Colville. 
Not a whole lot happening right now as their seasons are still yet to get kicked off. We are going to see one of their sports kick off here. That's tonight. Millard, we are going to see their first game of the season. However, a couple other sports still a bit on the delay. We won't see them until next week. We wish them the best of luck. As for South Summit, sort of the same thing. Boys soccer had a little of a rough start uh, last week or earlier this week against St. Joseph, a very, very strong soccer program actually in the 3A state classification. However, they are a, a very talented softball team and we're looking to not only talk to Indy Jones today, but we caught up with their head coach. We caught up with a couple more of their seniors and captains down there at South Summit. The Wildcats have an incredibly talented, as you know, athletic program, but also the softball program is no joke down there. Indy Jones, as we mentioned, top five hitters in the entire state of Utah last year and this year she is looking to not only make an impact on the hitting game when it comes to Utah softball, but uh, maybe even climb to the top of that hitting pedestal. That'll do it for this week in sports. Again, so much to cover. We've got softball, we've got boys soccer, we've got baseball, lacrosse. It, it is just absolutely going crazy here on the scoreboard and we are all here for it. When we come right back, we are gonna be sitting down, hanging out with Jared Hendry, the eight year uh, coach. He's been with the program for eight years, nearly a decade over there at Wasatch High School. So we will be sitting down chatting with him about the Wasps and their return to possible State 5A glory. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. The scoreboard is proudly sponsored by Andrea Cox Mortgage. Welcome to First Rate Mortgage. My name's James and I've been in the market for mortgages several times over the years, so I've gone through the process with different people. And uh, when I met Andrea, she explained to me why my current loans were subpar and how she could get better loans with better rates. If I had to describe it, Andrea in one word, I think I would use the word passionate. She is very passionate about what she does and getting the right solutions for her clients. Uh, and that made her an absolute pleasure to work with. Hi, I'm Andrea Cox. You can reach me at 435-631-9262. Call me, text me, or you can reach me on my website, andreacoxmortgage.com. Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back into the scoreboard. I'm your host Brigham Harris for today's Friday episode. We are going to be looking back on the week and uh, none more exciting. Well, maybe one more exciting uh, opening week in boys soccer. You got the Wasatch Wasps who are the returning 5A state champions and they got a 5-1 to one victory over Timpview. The reason why I say there may be a rivaling more exciting opening week is that their biggest rivals, Park City High School, who they don't actually play this year in the regular season, defeated the RSL Academy just a couple of days ago. So these are two of probably the strongest 5A soccer programs in the entire state and they are in both of our backyards. So we're super stoked about that. But let's keep it with Wasatch for right now. Again, give them the, the attention, the glory that they deserve being on top of that 5A mountain. We are chatting with Jared Hendry, the uh, eight years into his coaching tenure here with Wasatch High School. He's been the head coach for just a few years now, but nearly a decade with the program. Let's catch up right now with Coach Hendry. Hey, what's up, everyone? Brigham Harris here for the scoreboard. Right now, we are hanging out with Jared Hendry, the fourth-year head coach of the Wasatch High School boys soccer team, the defending champs. That's kind of my first question. That's what I wanted to bring you in on, especially the 2021 5A boys soccer champions. And you guys are now just in your first week, second week of practices. How does the team look? Uh, we're looking pretty good. We're, um, we have a game on Monday against Timview here. And so um, we're just trying to iron out some stuff. We have um, four returners that played a lot last year and a few others that got on the field and saw some action. Um, our, our JV team was phenomenal last year. Um, I didn't give them enough hype last year, but you know, to have a good varsity team, you have to have a good JV team and our JV team was phenomenal. So we're really excited about this year. Um, we've got a pretty tough preseason. Um, usually we had 14 um, season games, so we only got two preseason. This year we got six. Well, we're going to have one at the end of the year to kind of get into um, playoffs, and that will be with Hillcrest. But we have five really good preseason games. We have Tim View and Olympus next week. And then we actually have our spring break. Mm -hmm. And then we come back and we'll play Viewmont, Sky Ridge, and Bingham that week. Wow. And then we'll start into our region. Our region's going to be tough again. We've yeah. got 
we've got a really good region this year. So, well, you guys ran the table last year. Didn't seem the the tough region didn't seem to have too much of an effect on you guys. What do you attribute that success to? Was it was it the seniors of last year? Was it just the overall talent, or what eventually got you guys the title? Um, yeah, it was it was our overall talent. Um, our seniors were were really really good, um, but again, we had some kids pushing them to get there. Our, um, our seniors had played together since like fifth grade and we do have a group our the seniors this year have all played together since about the same time so we have a core of them um but yeah those seniors they had played together and it was more of managing how they played and what we were going to do um like i said we had a really good region so that helped us when we got into state and we ended up playing spanish fork and maple mountain both you know to to go to state and both of those teams stepped up and played us really well um you know, in both games, um, we scored in the last minute or so or in overtime to win those games. And uh, Maple Mountain was, was just phenomenal. And they're going to be hard again this year. And Spanish Fork's going to be good again. I mean, they're going to be really good. So. Yeah. Uh, talking a little bit about the past and the history of this program, in, in 2011 and 2013 was the last time that Wasatch had won state champions. So two and three years, um, somewhat of a dynasty in just a small amount of time. And then you take this break from state championships and, and now you have one again in 2021. How do you feel like the, the boys have responded to this sort of uptick in, in, uh, in success for the program? Um, I think they, we've, we've always had a really good team. And I think these boys, when they were younger, they wanted it. Um, these, even these boys too. Um, they want it and they are going out and, and getting it. They're, they're the, we're represented by about 11 or 12 different clubs. So you can't just say there's one club, but um, I know the club in the Valley has stepped up their training. Um, um, and the boys are going out to other clubs and, and, you know, stepping up their training. So we're all bringing it up and they're, they're, they're pushing each other to be better. And they want, they want it. They want, they want to be there. They want to be on top. And so, and then we as coaches, we, we look to what we have and we're trying to make sure that we know, you know, what we're going to have for this season and we can, we can coach them to what will be best for them. You know, um, you know, we have our philosophy, but we also know that, you know, we'll have strengths in different areas this year. And so we're going to look to, to, to capitalize on those strengths and really improve and try and um, work together to get to where we were last year. Like he mentioned, the Wasps have got a very tough schedule ahead of them. However, an incredibly talented team that we got to sit down and watch a little bit of their first practice. Uh, only a couple weeks into the entire season, tryouts just about 10 days ago. So we wish them the best of luck. Uh, gladly they don't actually play Park City during the season because that would be just be such a, a heart ripper for us to have to sit through and have to declare a winner after 90 minutes. However, Jared Hendry is coming back with us here in just a couple of minutes. Uh, that second half of his interview is coming at you right here on the scoreboard. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Take advantage of the amazing mountain access right from your front door. Apex Plaza offers impeccable amenities and unparalleled mountain access. I'm Stephanie J. This is the Opulent Minute. Featuring a contemporary designed great room and gourmet kitchen that open to an expansive terrace. I'm here with Crystal, owner of Guardian Angels Babysitting Inc. Tell us a little bit about the services you offer. Yeah, we offer luxury baby gear rental and babysitting and the commodities of home on your vacation. To book Guardian Angels, visit opulentvacations.com. The high-end amenities at Apex Plaza will entertain everyone. Enjoy soaking in your private hot tub or lounge by this 50-foot pool. The clubhouse game room will provide hours of fun for the whole family. With unbelievable ski and mountain bike access, there's something for everyone. You'll make unforgettable memories in this mountain retreat. Thanks for watching the Opulent Minute. Contact us today, opulentvacations.com. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back into the scoreboard. Again, I am your host, Brigham Harris. And as we mentioned, we are hanging out with Jared Hendry, the head coach of the boys soccer team at Wasatch High School, the defending 5A state champions. That is now three state titles in just the last uh, decade or so. 2011, they won the state title, as well as in 2013, 
They went on a about a eight year drought until winning that title just last year. So we'll send things back over to Jared Hendry and Wasatch Boys Soccer. Basically this year, what's going to be the key to success, the, the key to getting back to the top of the 5A Mountain? Um, I think just the key is, is getting these boys to play together. Um, last year we had so many seniors that, and even the boys that had played, um, that were juniors had played a lot with the seniors. Like they would just go play soccer. And this year we don't have as much as that. I mean, the, the younger classmen, yeah, they play together. Yeah but they don't all play together. And so that's what we're gonna, we need to work on is, is getting the talking, getting the shape um, and figuring out where where's the best fits for some of our athletes are. Mm -hmm. All very important aspects of, of a successful soccer team, but as returning champions, the bar is a little bit higher. Do you feel a little bit more stressed? Do you feel a little bit higher of an expectation heading into the season now that you're state champs? Um, I don't really feel that the bar has, I mean, I feel that we need to um, go out and show that you know we are a good program, and I said that at the end of the, last year. We wanna we wanna know that we want everyone to know that Wasatch, it wasn't just a fluke that we're there. I mean, before COVID, we made it to the semifinals. Um, COVID, we had the same team we had last year. Plus, we had a couple of really good players. So I think we would have probably gotten to the state championship that year. And then last year, um, of course, we got to the state championship and won. Um, and this year we're looking to be there again. I mean, the boys are all looking to be there and just creating a culture of, you know what, we're, we're one team. We want to, we, we want to respect one another and we want to, we want to build on each other to get to that state championship. Right. Well, it's definitely going to be a team effort to, to have that success really quickly. What's one player and one game that you're specifically looking forward to this season to watching or being a part of? I don't know if there's just one. Um, we're, we're playing Sky Ridge and Bingham. We beat Bingham one to nothing last year. Um, a lot of our boys played on the same comp team, so that's why they wanted to play him. Okay. So I think Bingham's looking to, to get back. And Sky Ridge is always a powerful team. They've always got a good team, so we're looking to that. Viewmont's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. So I think we really, I mean, and then our region. I can't just look at one game because yeah. um, it's just going to be, I mean, our boys are going to really be thrown into – you know, these guys want to come out and play us. The coaches want to play a good team, and they know Wasatch is a good team over history, not just last year, but, you know, throughout the years. So True. Very very well spoken <laughs> for someone who has a pretty large target on their back. Like you oh, just yeah. mentioned, lots of teams are going to come out really hard and, and want to play you guys tough. Um, again, Jared Hendry, the head coach of the Wasatch High School boys soccer team, defending state champs. We want to always give you that uh, accreditation. But thank you so much for your time, and we look forward to covering you this year, and, and uh, I'm sure we'll talk again soon. All right. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much. Coach Hendry, as you mentioned, you've got a very tough schedule, like you said, uh, facing off against a, a whole lot of very tough preseason opponents, but also the region is no joke either, and making it into that state tournament with a very high seed is really, really important. So we wish you the best of luck. We're going to be catching up with more of your players here in the coming months as boys soccer season does continue on. We uh, get closer and closer to those state championships at Rio Tinto. Gives you a little bit of a, a goosebump feeling just saying Rio Tinto and high school boys soccer state final so we will uh, hopefully see you there again we will be right back on the scoreboard chatting with another incredible athlete here in the wasatch back that and indy jones one of the top batting average holders for 2021 and i gotta tell you she is uh, not keen on letting go of that title we'll be back with indy here in just a few hi guys i'm janet the dairy king we're famous here for our ice cream we have 84 different kinds of shapes we also have some amazing food so come and try our chicken strips, our fish and chips dinners, our burgers, our fries, our sweet potato fries. Oh my gosh, we've got so much. Once you go over to the Heber Valley Railroad and ride their train, then of course you have to come here and see all of our trains. Our family serving your family since 1946. We hope to see you soon here at the Dairy King. Five hundred and seventy-three, a batting average. If you're just joining us right now here on the scoreboard, I'm your host, Brigham Harris. And yes, five seven three, that is the magic number for our next interview here on the show. Indy Jones, a senior, an incredibly 
talented monster when it comes to approaching that plate 573 was her batting average to end the year last year 17 home runs and guess what she's already got one on this season just one game in so let's send things over to Blake Orulian who is catching up with Indy Jones out at South Summit High School. Hey everyone, we're talking to Indy Jones over at South Summit Softball. Indy, thank you so much for talking to us today. Thank you. So, so we're talking to you because we've got uh, the softball season coming up and you are amongst uh, many others, one of the top players in the entire state, the second best hitting average in the entire state of Utah with 573 from last season, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so, so Indy, I've got to ask you a couple different questions. Specifically, how long have you been playing softball? Um, well, we started playing competitively when I was like eight, but I've like played like t-ball before that, so kind of just my whole life. Okay, and, and do you come from a family of softball players, baseball players? Has it always kind of been a part of your life? Um, my older brothers played uh, football, actually, so just kind of, we all just been very athletic. My brother played college football, so just kind of come from a very athletic family. We often talk to athletes, and when they come from athletic families, they become very, very good athletes themselves. Do you think that growing up in an athletic family, in a competitive family, has helped you become the softball player that you are? Oh, absolutely. I think it's helped me out a lot. In terms of in terms of your time here at South Summit, uh, what are you expecting in terms of this season? Your senior season, you had a great junior season, Season. Um, you, you lost in the quarterfinals of the playoffs, but are you expecting to go very far this season? Yeah, I think we will. I think we have a really strong team. We have a very strong hitting team as well as defense. I think our chemistry together has is going to help us get up pretty far. Yeah, I, one thing to mention is that uh, the preseason rankings came out. You were the number three team in your region, but you were the number one offense in all of, of the 3A uh, region as well. So with that being said, what do you think uh, attributes to that? Obviously your hitting ability, but who are some of the other players who have incredible offensive ability on this team? Um, I think that Avery Snyder and Malia Bowen have a very strong influence on our hitting as well. Um, we just have a really strong one, two, three, and four hitting count. I, I did also want to ask you a little bit about um, this season already. You had 17 home runs last season, and then just the other day at, against Duchesne, you had your first home run of the season. How many home runs do you think you're going to hit this year? I don't know. That's tough. I always just try to one-up myself every year, so as long as I can be that, I'd be really glad. Yeah, could you tell us a little bit about some of the preparation that it takes to be able to literally hit more than half of the pitches that are thrown at you? <laughs> Um, I don't know. I just go up with like having confidence in yourself. If I strike out, I know that I'll have an, another at bat and I'll have to just get up and do it again. But just having like confidence and knowing what I'm doing, staying patient, calm, just helps me get through that. So you're also a pitcher, is that correct? Yes. A and with that being said, what uh, what do you prefer? I guess I should say is, do you prefer hitting or do you prefer pitching? Do you prefer playing shortstop, which you also do? Um, I prefer hitting. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just feel like. I have more, I'm more confident and more powerful there, so I just enjoy that a lot more. And you also have some collegiate plans, is that correct? Yes, I'm going to play at the College of Southern Idaho. I wanted to ask you a little bit about the recruiting process. When did you make that decision, and also how did they find you? How did they reach out to you? Do you know how long they've been looking at you? Uh, what was that whole process like? It was a long process. Um, I've started like just sending emails to them since I was probably a sophomore, freshman maybe in high school. Um, I emailed them a lot thousands of times I swear um, he's very hard to reach also so it took it took a lot and also a former player at South Summit Hannah Joe Peterson she went to College of Southern Idaho and she helped a lot with me getting there she helped talk to them and then it just helped me get into contact with them better and so yeah speaking of kind of the the past you mentioned an old teammate of yours this team has won a couple state championships over the last decade or so back in 2015 and 2017 do you think that this, this team has the potential to do that once again Yes, I think so. All right, well, uh, thank you so much for sitting down with us, talking to us, Indy. We really appreciate it, and good luck for the rest of the season. We thank appreciate you. it. Yeah. Thank you so much. So the magic number for 2021 for Indy Jones, 573. Is she going to be able to top that her senior year? I'm not much of a betting man, but uh, if you see her practice and you watch her play, uh, some money might be thrown on the table to see Indy Jones eclipse that incredibly impressive stat line. Like I mentioned, she's already got a home run on the year against Duchesne, and they've got a handful of games coming up here in just the next week or so. So we wish them the best of luck, Indy, though. I, I don't feel like you need a whole lot of wishes of luck as you're incredibly talented. A pitcher as well. So much talent coming out of Camus right now, especially with that 16-year head coach in Cody Bowen, who we also got to catch up with. We'll be probably chatting with him here in the next
next few weeks. But as for right now, we're going to be uh, taking a short break. When we come back right here on the scoreboard, we are going to be talking a little bit more softball, a little bit more boys soccer, things we have to expect here in the next week or so. Coming right back on the scoreboard. Historic Deerfield is significant as a site because we're an important place in American history. All but a few of the historic houses are on their original home lots. The original town plan from the 1670s is still in place. The town retains its original scale. And in many of the houses, we have objects connected to Deerfield, the Connecticut River Valley, and New England. And all of this together helps to convey a deep sense of place. Hey guys, welcome back into the scoreboard. I am your host, Brigham Harris, on this Friday episode. We have been talking nonstop boys soccer, uh, girls softball, the amount of talent that is here in the Wasatch back is just incredible. And if you were here in the last segment, we mentioned 573 as a batting average for an entire season in 2021. That with Indy Jones, who we just spoke to, that is an incredible stat. You want to know another incredible stat? Three home runs in two games or maybe if that's not good enough for you, seven RBIs off seven at-bats. That's right, our Athlete of the Week goes to Paige Armendariz out of Wasatch High School, softball player, also a pitcher, and incredibly talented. They are just two games into the season and she has got three, three dingers in two games. That is insane, as well as seven at-bats, seven RBIs. She's leading the state right now with no problem at all. Wasatch currently is playing at the Dixie Tournament in St. George, so we wish them the best of luck. They got a handful more games before they make the trek back to Heber City, and we start to see region play take off here in just a couple weeks. So once again, congratulations, Paige Armanderas, the pitcher out of Wasatch High School. Again, I gotta say it again, three home runs in two games, seven RBIs, seven at-bats, five hits, just insane. So congratulations again, Paige. We look forward to hopefully talking to you, having you here on the scoreboard, chatting a little bit about the season. So that'll do it for us here on the scoreboard. For Blake O'Reilly and I'm Brigham Harris. We'll see you on the next one. If you ever want to tune in, Park City TV every Tuesday and Friday at 6 and 10 p.m. or head to The Scoreboard Nation or catch us on Instagram at Scoreboard Nation. We're always uh, posting trailers, highlights, videos, interviews, all that good stuff. So again, we will see you on the next one right here on the scoreboard.